Good morning, everybody. Thank God for another day among the land of the living. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I'll tell you what, when you look at around the world and you see everything going on, um, you know, we are definitely um, watching things set up for the end times. Um, you know, that final seven year period before Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom is fastly approaching us and you know I'm, I'm looking at just everything going on when you look over in the Middle East I'm watching Jerusalem and Israel um, because they are the timepiece you know they've been back in the land for since 1948 they've been there for 73 years and you know you see things setting up for that Ezekiel war that's yet to come and things are lining up with the different Abraham Accords and, you know, the, the realigning of the um, political um, region over there. All the nations are just lining up for that Ezekiel war coming from the war, from the north. And, you know, you look at Iran and Israel and, and Iran's proxies over there and you just see everything. You see different wars going on right now. And so that's one of the end time signs we're going to see. And it's, it's just getting ready. You see the lawlessness all over the world. Um, you know, it just, it, it, it's, it's right there. You know, you, in Israel, the, the third temple is going to be rebuilt. They've already got the plans for the third temple. Um, the twice daily sacrifices are going to begin to, um, they're going to start doing those eventually. And they're talking about that already. They've been, they've got the anointing oil ready for them, for the Messiah. And then they're expecting the Messiah to come. And, you know, you just see things um, converging all at once. And so we know we're almost there. We know that we are getting close. You know, Jesus has almost been gone 2000 years since he resurrected and ascended on high um you know many say that was about 28 to 33 a.d right in that time frame so 2028 that's the that would be if, if that's the case then that would be uh 2000 years and he could return at that point between that time frame of 28 and 33 um a.d if that's when he resurrected and so you know 2028 to 2033 is right around the corner we still have a seven year period to throw in there for the the tribulation period um daniel's 70th week so it's getting close you know it's getting close and i wanted to look at revelations chapter six today looking at the horse the four horsemen and the first four seals and comparing that to matthew 24 and you know have they begun to ride yet have those horses begun to ride and so when we look at the the four horsemen in chapter 6 of revelations i'm going to compare that to chapter 24 of matthew and just look at some different things what to look for how do we know that the you know daniel's 70th week has begun we have different hints and clues in the Bible. We've been given different signs and different things to watch for. And, you know, we're going to touch on those a little bit today. We're looking at um, chapter 6 of Revelations. It says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, come and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse. He who sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And what that means is to overcome. Conquering and to conquer is the same thing as to overcome. So he goes forth to overcome the people. So what you see there is deception. Amen. He comes to conquer through deception. And when you compare that to Matthew 24, it's also found in Mark and Luke. But I'm just going to look at Matthew for now. You know, if you look at Matthew 24 and Revelations 13, there are 
or Revelations chapter 6 through 8, there's actually 13 parallels that go, you know, they parallel to each other. So it's the same thing. I believe Matthew 24 is the same. The all of it discourse when Jesus is telling them the signs of the, you know, the end times and what to look for and when he would return, you see those same signs, 13 of them exactly in Revelation 6 through 8. And I'm going to do that one of these days, but today I'm just looking at the first four seals, the four horsemen. Are they riding yet? Or how close are they to, to beginning to ride? So you see in seal one, the white horse, what you see is um, he comes con to conquer, amen, and to overcome and through deception. When you look at Matthew 24, when the disciples came to Jesus and asked him what would be the signs of thy coming in the end of the age, he, he gave them a list of signs to look for. And we're going to read those here and compare them to chapter 6 of Revelations, the first six seal, or first four seals. Chapter 24, verse 1 says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, Do, do you not see all these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, here we go, saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming? So when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the world. Amen. So verse 4 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Amen. So the first thing we see, we see, um, we see deception and false Christ. Amen. When you, when you actually read the, the seven churches, the first church, you actually see false disciples. But I'm, I'm going to stay away from that for now. I'm just sticking to Matthew 24 and chapter 6 of Revelation. So what we see here is, is false messiahs and false Christ. That's the first thing that we're going to see according to the words of Jesus in Matthew 24. It says, Be not deceived. Amen. Take heed that none, no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and it shall deceive many. So many are going to be deceived um, by false messiahs and false Christ. Amen. When you look at seal number two, horse number two, what you see, it says in verse three, chapter six, verse three, Revelations, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him who sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So you see peace being taken from the earth, and that it was given to them to kill one another with the great sword. And when you look at Matthew 24, the second thing you see here, it says in... Matthew 24, verse 6, I believe it is. Yes. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Okay, so what we see there, we see wars and rumors of wars. We see that going on right now. Uh, Russia is getting ready to invade Ukraine. China is going to invade Taiwan. That's what it's looking like. It's just a matter of time before Iran and their proxies come against Israel. Um, the Middle East is hot right now. And it's just a matter of time where things um, break out. And it could lead to a big war over there. So, you, you know, we see that going on right now. Wars and rumors of wars. So what you see here in 24, the second sign in chapter 24 given by the Messiah to the disciples about his coming was 
um, you would see wars or rumors of wars and nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And when you look at seal number two in Revelations chapter six, you see peace being taken from the earth. Amen. So verse, when you look at the third seal, it says, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the beast, the third beast saying, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he who sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And that refers to the, sac the sacredity of food and is meant to portray that fact. The balance is in the hand. It, it represents, um, well, verse 6 says, And I heard a voice in the midst of the fourth beast. Okay, so it says, and the third seal says, I beheld him lo, a black horse, and he who sat on him had a pair of balances. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four, four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou her not the oil and the wine. So what you see there, the balances represents the, um, you're going to have the oil and the wine, which represent the elites, the globalists, the, the, the ones with all the money. And then you have those where it's, it says um, it's going to be three measures of barley for a penny. And that represents, you know, it says there's going to be a full day's wages for a loaf of bread. So that represents um, famine and uh, money imbalances. Uh, the food's going to be very, it's very big inflation. And, but you're going to have the rich, and then you're going to have the equally poor, pretty much is what it's saying. So you see there, you see famine and pestilences with that black horse. And when you look at Matthew 24, the third sign you see here is in verse 8. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall there, they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. That goes with um, the seal number 2. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall be many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many prophets shall rise, many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he shall, he who shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. I skipped over on accident that third sign which is supposed to be about famine and pestilences. Let me look it up here really quick. Here it is. I'm sorry. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So there you see the famines and the pestilences that line up with the black horse in seal number 3 with the famines and pestilences in, in chapter 6 of Revelations. Okay, now when you look at the fourth seal in chapter 6 of Revelations, in verse 7, it says, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. So, this fourth seal, power is given to him, the rider, to kill a fourth of the earth, 25% of the earth, with those first three horses. With, with, it says, and power was given over them, so over the, the three horses, over a fourth part of the earth, to kill a sword, with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So the fourth horseman is given power. The rider on the fourth horse is given power to kill 25% of the earth. So what you see there is death. And when you look at uh, chapter 24 of Matthew and verse 11, it says, And many, oh, let's read 10, And then shall be many offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. 
There's false prophets. Once those false prophets begin, they're just going to continue on. That's the first thing we're going to see, but they're going to go through the whole um, period during the tribulation period. I, I believe they're going to start and they're going to keep going through the whole thing. Uh, verse 12, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he sh who shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. So we see there um, the four horses, the different parallels with the four horses in, in the four, first four seals in chapter 6 of Revelations. And in Matthew 24, the first four signs that are given here, uh, they line up perfectly and so, you know, things are getting ready to go down. Um, but the first thing I believe that we're going to see is false messiahs. And it says there's going to be many false messiahs. So I think that's one thing that we need to look for to um, for the beginning of the, the um, final seven-year period, the tribulation period. And, you know, the, the, we see things happening right now. We see the wars and the rumors of wars. We see the famine and pestilences and the food shortages and um, the economic collapse. And it's just going to get worse. You know, things are not going to get better. It's going to get worse. We see the great falling away of the church. Um, you know, you just see everything going on and... Um, we're getting close. It's all set up. It's the perfect storm to go to go into that final seven year period. And when you think about the fact that, you know, God created everything in six days and he rested the seventh day. Um, you know, one day is what the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. We got four thousand years of history in the Old Testament. We've almost got 2,000 years of history since Jesus resurrected. Um, it's almost been 2,000 years since he ascended on high. And we know he's coming back. And, you know, it, when you look at everything, you look at all the clues, um, we're getting close. And everything's converging all at once. So... You know, it's time to really focus on our relationship with God and, and get strong in the Lord. Uh, God wants us to grow up. You know, he doesn't want us to stay babies. He wants us to get born again. Uh, give your life to Christ. Jesus died for your sins. Um, he paid your sin debt in full. We're sinners in need of a Savior. Jesus is the Savior of the world. And so... If you repent to God and place all your faith and trust in Jesus and the finished work of the cross, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, um, you know, he paid your debt in full with his blood. We have a debt we cannot pay. Well, the good news is Jesus paid it. That's the gospel message. Jesus paid that debt in full. The scripture says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know, where the rubber meets the road, the bottom line is we're all going to be judged on Judgment Day, according to 9 and 27 of Hebrews. We've all broken the law of God. We're going to be judged according to the moral law, the Ten Commandments. We're all guilty. We've all fallen short. We've all missed the mark. We're all, um, we've all been given an eternal death sentence. The wrath of God is upon us as sinners. And so... You know, our punishment as being sinners is eternal death, lake of fire. But the good news is that God loved us so much, he gave us the only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, you know, he sent the son, his son into the world to die for the sins of all mankind. And through his blood, our sins can be washed away. And we can inherit the gift of eternal life. So, you know, choose life. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. You know, the same way you trust in a parachute to save your life if you're falling out of the sky 1,500 feet up and you're going to go 150 miles an hour and you're going to splat on the ground when you hit, you would die. You would put that parachute on to save your life. Well, it's, it's the same analogy. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. 
to save your life on judgment day. Don't try to save yourself by your own good your own good works. Don't try to save yourself. You know, put your faith and trust in Jesus to save you and you'll be born again. So, you know, get right with God, repent to God, put your faith and trust in Jesus um, for salvation uh, for and for everything else. Trust in Jesus, in Jesus alone. And if you do that, you'll be born again and let your light shine, you know, grow, grow in grace and knowledge, grow, uh, read your Bible, uh, pray, you know, do everything you can to, to, to be obedient to the word of God and, and pray always, you know, pray without ceasing and just, it's time to get right with God. It's time to focus and really just focus on Jesus. The scripture says that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So bow the knee now, get saved, trust in Jesus and, you know, gain eternal life. We have a heaven to gain and a hell to escape. So this thing is real. Scripture says, what shall profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Live for eternity. Live for the future. Live for eternity. And, um, you know, it's a serious thing. So, God bless you all. Um, you know, love God with all of your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. And, and place your faith and trust in Jesus in the finished work of the cross. You'll be born again. You'll be saved. You'll be a new creature. The Holy Spirit will begin to do a work in you. Uh, 1 and 6 of Philippians says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus. Amen. So thank God. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Um, have a wonderful day. And um, we're getting close. Jesus is coming soon. That final seven-year period is coming. We're getting close. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And Till next time, love God with all your heart, love your neighbor as yourself, and let that light shine. Amen.